So what really happened in Chicago when all those EVs and EV chargers failed to operate when the temperature got to extreme cold? Uh, the extreme cold was a polar vortex that hit the Chicago, the city of Chicago and surrounding areas that dropped the temperature below minus 10 Fahrenheit or minus 23 in Celsius. This got me really thinking because while that's cold, in Canadian terms, that's yeah, it's cold, but it's not, not crazy cold. Crazy cold is like what they have out in Alberta, you know, minus 40, minus 50 Celsius which is roughly the same temperature in Fahrenheit. Uh, those people have it really bad. And I don't remember hearing a lot of problems with charging. So this, this really caught my attention and I wanted to know why. Hang on to the end. I have a, a little tidbit from, uh, from a guy actually who, who has a YouTube channel and charges out in uh, Alberta, Calgary, I think. Being into YouTube, first thing I did was go into YouTube and say, you know, uh, I googled, or googled, I YouTube searched uh, Chicago EV charging freeze, and I got a bunch of hits. But oddly enough, the first one wasn't about EVs at all. They were uh, some guy, actually there's two. The first one was a CBC thing talking about how to, CBC Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, uh, that telling you how to treat your car in the winter. The things you need to do, uh, the idea of, you know, you know, plugging it into a block heater, that kind of thing. I was like a minute into it and I realized this had nothing to do with EVs at all. It was all about gas cars. And if you live in a cold climate like Canada, Sweden, Alaska, northern, northern U.S. states, you're used to the idea of a block heater you know that gas cars don't work that great in the cold either. They have a hard time starting. They take a lot to crank over. If you're in extreme cold areas like Alberta, Northern Ontario, Northern Quebec, Saskatchewan, you are looking at needing to plug in your car overnight into what's called a block heater. Basically, you put a plug by your car, just a regular 110, and you plug your engine into the block, into the uh, outlet. It's not really your engine. It's a block heater or an oil pan heater. It will keep your coolant warm. Uh, keeping your overall engine a bit warmer makes it easier to turn over and start in the morning. Uh, same with the oil pan heater. That will keep your oil warm and fluid. Um, oil gets really thick when it gets cold. So that makes it a lot harder to to operate your engine until it warms up and the and the oil gets flowing. People who live in cold climates get used to the idea of warming up their car before they get going. They usually go five minutes or so. You let your, your car turn over in place to allow that oil to get warmer, to, to actually start coating all the bits and pieces inside, and it helps to protect your engine. You can also get an oil pan heater which will keep your, your oil warm through the night. Then when you start it, you can pretty much go. Um, I've lived most of my life in Southern Ontario, in Ontario, and now I live in uh, New Brunswick. Uh, neither one of them is gets all that cold, but we do experience cold. I've been, you know, minus 30, minus 35, even as low as minus 40 before. It does get cold here. It's just for, for shorter periods. If you're in a place like Alberta, it gets really cold, all winter long, except when you get the Chinooks and then you're golfing in February. Go figure. So anyways, the first video I, I really spent some time on was this guy from Sweden who was talking all about, you know, how to keep your car warm when it gets extreme cold. He was talking minus 50 temperatures, that's Celsius, well, about the same Fahrenheit. Um, when it gets extreme cold, what you need to do, how to you know put a blanket over your, your engine, use the block heater, use the oil pan heater, make sure your car is facing the right way so that you know if you can't get it going, you can get it towed away or you can get boosted or you're pointing towards uh, the power source so you can plug in your block heater, all these kinds of tips and tricks. Also, 
that the cables get cold and you know don't don't uh, run them over when they're frozen and that kind of thing so it was all about gas cars and how to treat them in the cold that was video number two video number three is kyle connor from out of spec reviews saying how he flew to chicago must be nice to just check this out and to, to find out for himself uh, what went on. And it was a great video. It covered a lot of detail. I love Kyle's videos. That's Kyle Connor from Out of Spec Reviews and a whole bunch of other channels uh, in, his, in his EV, uh, well, his vehicle YouTubing empire. He's a colorful character and he, he does a great review and he's very knowledgeable. He gets in deep into a lot of things. I will link him in the description. Uh, Anything you see show up here, you'll find generally linked in the description if I don't forget to do it. Uh, because uh, I'm basically taking a clip off of YouTube. I like to credit where the clip came from. Anyways, Kyle went and he checked it out. He's standing there in the cold in winter in Chicago in a hoodie the entire freaking time. I have no idea what he uses for blood, but it isn't the normal stuff. Long story short, um, he reviewed it, he got into it, and he, he uncovered some details, which we'll talk about more uh, as the thing goes by, uh, as the, the video goes by. Video four is that YouTuber in Canada from Alberta. Uh, we'll talk about that at the end. That's a, a bit of an interesting tidbit. So here is the long and the short of it. There's not enough DC fast chargers in Chicago, and they don't all work when it gets really cold or even all the time. The Tesla superchargers worked reasonably well. They had some problems, some that were out of service. Um, probably not because the power was not capable of being delivered, but because the charging handle was in some way compromised. Something to be aware of. Charging handles, the J1772 plug, the NAX plug, the Tesla plug, the Chatamo plug, whatever. Don't drop them in the snow. Don't get snow and ice in them. Uh, put them back into the chargers properly. Make sure they're protected from the elements. This matters. Um, electricity, particularly the communications cabling in there, does not like water. If it notices water, it'll cause problems or can cause problems. So that's first off, if you're an EV driver, protect your plugs, keep them in the holsters, keep them out of the snow, keep them protected. It will save you all, all of us a lot of hassle. Sounds like most of the Tesla chargers were physically working, but they had some, maybe some handle issues. That's Fairly easy to deduce because the way Tesla does their charging dispensers is if basically the unit that you plug into is not the charger. The charger is actually a box off over there somewhere and the dispenser is what you plug into. So really, if the charger is broken, it's going to be broken over there. It's not the thing in front of you. If the thing in front of you isn't working, it's usually the handle or the cable that has got problems. Um, if the charger has problems, there's going to be two dispensers up because most Tesla dispensers have, or chargers have two dispensers attached to them. That's why they have, I think the convention is like A and B, like one A, one B, and they're for some reason not right beside each other, but whatever. Uh, if, the, if the charger isn't working, both dispensers will fail right? If it's a dispenser issue, one of the two will fail. That's kind of how to think that one through. The Electrify America, the EV Go, whatever, they are still experiencing a lot of physical problems, especially Electrify America. Kyle pointed out just when he was there, this was after the, the cold snap, um, the Electrify uh America chargers, the, the newer ones, I think two or three out of four or whatever were had failed. And it was the old one that, uh, that actually continued to work. Um, Electrify America is still having massive problems with keeping their chargers up and running. I don't know how they're going to fix that. 
I, I hope they do because they are very important to the charging landscape uh, in the US and also in Canada. So I want it to work and I want it to work right. Uh, but in general, um, I'm thinking the charging issues are operator uh, issues more than the charges themselves. Operator meaning the charging provider, Electrify America, uh, EVgo, Joe's electric charging station, whatever, um, being poorly maintained, not being purchased for the climate that they're in, and generally speaking, just bad management. Like there are certain companies, and we'll come to that towards the end, that do a better job of this than others. And it's all about your commitment to charging and, and uptime. Uh, and also your knowledge base. If you, if you aren't selecting the right charger for the right location and maintaining it properly, then you're going to have problems. Cars. Now, here is the bigger problem. It's the EVs themselves are a bit of an issue in the cold. I'm not going to sugarcoat it, okay? There were some real problems that popped up here in Chicago. Um, charging networks we just talked about, EVs. EVs do suffer in the cold. It's not that gas cars don't also, but EVs is more pronounced and more noticeable in the cold. They will have less range. The battery, the electrons moving around of the battery is less efficient, so you're going to have less total availability of the battery. Uh, it's going to take longer to charge. Uh, there's, you know, it, it's just everything around the cold is fighting the battery, right? It Batteries do not like the cold, period. End of story. So you're either going to sacrifice range to compensate for the cold um, or you're just not going to work. And that's kind of the way it is in the cold. Um, the way you counter that, and this is what went wrong in Chicago. Multiple things, but let's talk about EVs and how a lot of EV drivers don't understand how they work. It's just like those gas cars having to plug in the, uh, you know, the, the block heater or making sure your vehicle is pointed at your power source before you go to bed, you know, maybe putting a, an engine blanket on. These kinds of things will help to make your, your experience better. First of all, if you own a home, charge at home. If you own a home, you have your own house, put a level two charger in your garage. If you only, if you only drive a few kilometers a day, then by all means, plug into a 110 outlet. You'll be just fine. But if you, if you need charging, Get a 110 charge, or sorry, a level two charger, install it in or around your garage, and charge at home. When it gets really cold, plug your car in for the night. Whether it's a 110 outlet, that's not ideal, but it'll do. It'll, it'll give your car some power to keep it warm. Cars, electric cars, use battery power to maintain themselves when they're stationary. Whether it's extremely hot or extremely cold, they will condition that battery and that consumes some power. Not all cars are the same, but that is, generally speaking, what happens. That's why when you leave an electric car sitting for weeks on end, you could run out of battery entirely because it's conditioning the battery to maintain it at a healthy temperature. Not, not it doesn't consume a ton of power, but it does consume some power. So plug that thing in, 110, 220, you'll be fine. If you don't need to use the fast charger networks, don't. Invest in that level two charger. You can get cheaper chargers, more expensive chargers, but invest in them and put it in your house. Understand that the batteries do not work as efficiently in the winter in the cold. So to charge a battery, fast charge a battery, it needs to be an optimal temperature. If it isn't that optimal temperature, the battery has to come up to temperature 
to fast church. So this is one of the big things that went wrong in Chicago. And it let, led to a lot of people thinking that the chargers were broken when they actually weren't. Because what would happen is someone with a, with a dead cold battery would drive five minutes to the charger, they would plug in and it wouldn't start fast charging. It would maybe use a couple of kilowatts, maybe even less, half a kilowatt. They think, oh, it's broken. Move to the next one, move to the next one. Oh, they're all broken. Well, actually, they're not broken. Your battery is so freaking cold that the car says, oh, I can't fast charge this thing yet. I'll break it. So I have to warm it up. If you haven't preconditioned that battery to accept high, high powered electricity, it will spend a period of time, sometimes a long time, warming that battery up to be able to accept fast charging. Understand? That first bit, when it's doing like half a kilowatt or whatever, it is getting your battery ready to charge. Now, the, the manufacturers don't help. They've got these big screens in the cars and they don't tell you much. If you're sitting at a charger and you plug it in and the battery needs to precondition before it can give fast charging, well, why don't you have a, a, a notice come up on the display? Nothing's broken. Just got to warm up your battery before we can throw the power in there, you know, so people aren't doing stupid stuff. Give us more information, please. And EV drivers or potential EV drivers do a bit of research. Watch videos like these. We'll tell you how it is. If you want to fast charge as much as possible when you get to the charger, set the charger as your destination in your vehicle's navigation system. That will cause, if it's available in your vehicle, your car to start preconditioning the battery to accept the maximum charge the battery that the charger can deliver. If, now bear in mind, that's your vehicle navigation system. There's a couple of models out there. You can just tell it to precondition and it will, but most it's, it's, it's linked to the vehicle navigation system. That's not Google. That's not, that's not Apple Maps. You may use those to get from A to B, but if you want your car to precondition, it needs the vehicle's nav to take you there. So get into that vehicle navigation system, select the right place. Uh, usually they'll have like how to find an EV charger thing. Pick the one you want to go to, say navigate to charger, and then it will precondition your battery to be optimal when you reach it. Don't forget you also in an EV have a 12 volt battery. Those things can be subject to cold, just like any other battery. They can have some issues. If it's getting old, it might fail. If it fails, then your whole car won't start. Because despite the fact you have this giant battery under your feet, it's that 12 volt that handles all the, uh, the infotainment, the, the gauges, the, the locks, everything, the computer, it's all run off of that 12 volt battery. So if that, 12 volt has failed because it's in the cold uh, or it's old or whatever, that can also be a problem. So be aware of that. That's not an EV thing. That's just a, a, a 12 volt battery thing. That has to be maintained and it has to be kept in a good condition. This event has highlighted the need for more AC charging, level two charging. That's why I just harped on if you own your own home, Put a level two charger in there. If your condo or apartment building owner, start putting level two chargers in those buildings. It is necessary. EVs are becoming much more common over the next five years. They are going to become massive. They're going to be everywhere. People are going to need to charge even if they live in an apartment building. Otherwise, we're going to have to be putting in a billion expensive ultra-fast chargers that do not need to be there. We need those for people that are on road trips, for people that are away from 
home for people that are going further than the usual distance. They shouldn't be doing their daily charging at an EV fast charger. And government, municipal, provincial, state, federal, whatever, get the bylaws changed. Provide the funding or the incentives or whatever it takes to unlock apartment building charging. It's it's a once in a lifetime expense and, and exercise that we have to do. In the future, it'll be fine. Municipalities, change your bylaws. No building built today should be built without EV charging availability. At least the power run to the places you're going to put the chargers. Even if you don't put the chargers, run the power. The chargers can come after as the EVs come. But retrofitting that power is a lot harder. Get it done when the building is built. This is a no-brainer. You build a house, you build an apartment building, is there an outlet for the, the stove, for the fridge, for your shaver in the bathroom? Of course there is. Change the code to make sure that the modern buildings meet the modern requirements. It's not that big a deal and it's not very, it's not a very highbrow thought. Just get it done. Another thing that, that contributed to the problem in Chicago, which isn't such a problem here in Canada for whatever reason, or at least not that I've seen, is rideshare drivers. Apparently in the US, rideshare drivers can rent or lease EVs to do their rideshares in. And most of them don't have charging at home. So they're using superchargers to be able, or fast chargers to be able to charge up their EVs to do their job. The problem is there's not enough superchargers. So why are we using the public network to do what is a commercial purpose? If you are, uh, I don't know, Uber or Lyft or whatever, and you're encouraging people to use EVs as your as your deliver as your rideshare vehicle, well, build hubs in those cities for those EV drivers to charge at. Don't put them on the public networks, or build out your own public network so that you know there's more availability. But until there are a lot more chargers out there, that doesn't make sense. And also, they shouldn't be just like any other vehicle. They should be on. AC charging overnight or when they're down, not on DC fast charging when. That is really only an exceptional use that should not be a regular use. If you've enjoyed the content you've seen and heard so far, please hit that thumbs up button, subscribe, or share the content. I would appreciate it. It helps out the channel, costs you nothing. I'm going to give you five tips to EV ownership as it relates to battery charging in the winter. Tip number one, plug your car in during the winter, during extreme cold events. Even if it's just at a 110 outlet, plug your car in, it will help keep your car warmer and keep it ready to go for the next morning. Tip number two, don't let your car drop below 20% all winter long. Never below 20% all winter long. That is, so when you get a cold snap, your car can condition itself and doesn't go to zero. You do not want your car to go to zero. A, it's not good for the battery. And B, then you're towing your vehicle to somewhere, and then you're really going to be on that charger for an extended period of time because now it's cold soaked. It is cold, cold dead. You got to plug it in. The car's got to, do whatever it's got to do to get that battery ready to accept power at all, warm up the battery, and then start charging it, usually slowly at first, and then it will steadily ramp up. You're going to have two, three hours sitting on a fast charger to get it to where it needs to be to be ready to go again. If you charge at home, you can set your charging uh, parameters in your car to charge your car either 
as soon as you plug it in or at a certain time, but you can usually also set it to, to complete the charge at a certain time that you say usually leave. Say you usually leave at seven in the morning. You set it so that it completes its charge at seven in the morning. Do that if you can, because in the winter, that means your car has been charging uh, for probably several hours. Your battery will be warmer. Your cabin will be warmer. Everything will be warmer. Your car will be more efficient and it'll have a better drive. It'll go further on the power that you have available. It won't need to use power to get that battery up to temperature before you leave. All right. Following on to that is number four. Number four is pre-warm your car before you leave. Now that's the cabin of the car. But if your car is cold, but it's plugged in because you've just been charging all night long and you pre-warm your car before you leave, it's going to use that, that shore power, that, that power that you've got plugged in from the wall to warm up your car and leave your battery alone. That will allow you to have maximum range. Your car will be warm. Your battery will, will be warm. Everything will be warm when you leave. Sounds good. It's comfy. Uh, interesting tidbit with the Ionic 5. When you do that, it warms the seat. It warms the steering wheel. It's great. <laughs> The, the bolts, uh, it would warm the cabin, but it wouldn't do the other things. So this is definitely an upgrade. Okay, number five. That's the preconditioning that we already talked about. Do not forget when you're heading to a DC fast charger, set it in the navigation to go to that charger. So it will precondition before you get there. Now, if you're only five minutes from the charger, it's not going to precondition much, so don't expect it to be perfect. It takes some time to precondition that battery up to temperature. So wherever you are, set it in the nav and go. If you've got a half an hour drive or so, it'll, it should be well preconditioned. If you, like you're on a road trip, this, is, this counts for the summer too. If it's hot and your battery is getting... Uh, is, is needing a charge and it's hot, and then you your battery will cool the battery, your car will cool the battery down to a temperature that can accept power. So it goes both ways. Look out for that. Okay, the tidbit for the end. A YouTube channel called Tesla Camping Canada uh, just posted a video, and I'll link it in the description. It's good. It's you know, this this is a picture from it. Um, he is in Alberta. It is minus 35 Celsius, which is about minus 31 Fahrenheit. So this is really freaking cold. Um, not so strange for them, but for in most other places on the planet, it is freaking cold. And he decided to test three chargers, three chargers, that um, to see how they would work. He started with a Tesla. It worked fine. And then he went off to a, uh, a flow charging station, which is the picture I have here, and it worked fine. And then he went off to a charge point one that was, uh, I think, at a grocery store or something, and uh, also worked fine. Three chargers, extreme cold, they worked fine. Check it out. It's a good video. This Chicago incident was jumped on by all the, the legacy media and a lot of YouTubers and a lot of FUD people as CEVs don't work. But you search it, you'll find there's a lot about the Chicago incident, but there's not a lot about much else. I don't see this happening in Canada. I don't hear about it in Norway, where they got 80%, 80 plus percent of New cars sold that are electric in Norway is cold in the winter. Sweden, Alaska, northern Canada, like they're selling EVs up in the Arctic. Why is it not a problem there? The, pro the reason is those chargers, those EV owners, they're all knowing what they're doing in the cold. The chargers are ready for the cold because they expect the cold. No one is putting in a charger that's meant for Calif Southern California 
in Edmonton, Alberta, right? They're, they're not going to work because the question is always going to come up. Will this work at minus 50? And if it won't work at minus 50, it's a non-starter in Canada. I don't know what they did in Chicago, but they did something wrong. I would love to find out if companies like Flow, which is Canadian-based, does something special to make sure their units operate all the time, no matter what the weather is. Do they put heaters inside? Do they spec the components in such a way? I'd like to know. If anybody has some answers, please put them in the comments below. If you have any anecdotes, put them in the comments below. If you check out the podcast channel, there's a way to give me a voice note. If you have an experience, tell me about it. I'll feature it on the show. All right. Take care. Have a good one. See you in a week.